Hey everybody. So what we're going to talk about today is take a real quick look at a CAD modeling application called Fusion 360. Now one of the best parts about Fusion 360 uh, is that it's free. Well, it's free for companies who make less than $100,000, but I'm guessing that covers most indies and freelancers and that kind of thing. Uh, if you're making more than $100,000, you can probably afford to buy a license. Now, aside from the price, one of the other great things about Fusion 360 uh, is that it seems to drag CAD modeling forward to the current century. I mean, uh, there's a history timeline at the bottom. You can jump back and edit uh, previous steps, and those changes will ripple forward. And the interface is slick. You know, there's nice widgets and stuff everywhere. But it's much less uh, archaic than what you're probably used to seeing uh, if you've looked at uh, CAD modeling in the past. So this is not going to be a comprehensive tutorial or any kind of like a really uh, deep dive on it, but it's going to be more of just something to whet your appetite. Um, this kind of uh, this video ties into my uh, my prior videos where I talk about you should always be learning new things, or at the very least try to stay uh, aware of what options are out there. So if you run into a modeling program, you know or a modeling problem, I should say, in the future where you think that CAD modeling would benefit you, you can be like. Oh yeah, Warren mentioned Fusion 360. Maybe I'll go look at that a little deeper. And that's all this video is meant to do, is just to spark that in your mind when the time comes. So having said all that, um, let's take a quick look. Okay, so when you first start up Fusion 360, you're going to get a view like this. And we're not going to go over the interface or any of that stuff, because it's just, you know, like I said, this is meant to give you just a taste for it. So we're going to create some primitives real quick. And uh, when I get done creating a few of these primitives, I'm going to talk about something that you're probably going to be noticing you know, as a 3D artist. There's a cylinder, and I will create a sphere as well, just to have a few options. Okay, put him there. Now you probably noticed when I was creating those primitives, uh, it wasn't asking me for things like a uh, number of segments for the cylinder or uh, the amount of subdivision on the sphere. And that's because these surfaces are expressed mathematically. And it's a little weird at first to get your head around, but luckily it's not something you really have to pay attention to either because it just doesn't matter. Uh, the tools are modern enough now that you don't have to think about the internals of things. So. Uh, having done that, uh, we'll move on to some Boolean stuff just to show you how that works and how easy that is. So when you're working in CAD, uh, one of the big things you do with it is you do Booleans between bodies. So if I move this body over so he intersects the, uh, uh, the box there, and I'll pull them up a little bit to make it look, you know, make it a little more complicated and say, okay. Now, if I combine these two, I say, there's my target body, there's my tool body, and I want to do a cut. And I say, okay. And it just cuts it out. There's no, there's no fuss. There's no weird triangulation to deal with. There's none of that jazz you normally have when you're dealing with a modeling application. Uh, and that has ups and downs, but on the whole, it's a very clean result. And just real quick here, if I select or if I hit the, uh, the fillet tool, I pick that edge and this edge and drag them out. You can get a nice fillet going on those edges. You know, round them out a little bit. And you're like, yeah, but you know, I'd also like to fill it out, say this, this, and this to one millimeter on there. And you can see this stuff is very fluid and quick and it just sort of works. I mean, those fillets are perfect, right? And I didn't have to deal with bevels or subdivisions or pinching or any of that kind of stuff, right? So there are advantages to this. And let's just say that I grab the sphere and I move the sphere to, oh, I don't know, let's say here or whatever, just, just kind of uh, indenting that I say okay and I go to combine again and I say this and this let's do another cut okay and it scoops out that cylinder from that area and then for the final piece I'm like well and I also need to bevel that 
uh, we'll do the same distance, we'll say one millimeter, and we're done. And it's a mathematically smooth and perfect surface. And it, uh, to use Apple uh, terminology, it just works. I mean, it's really handy for a lot of things. Now, uh, there's another way of cutting into shapes, and I'll show you that right now. Uh, when you're creating new shapes, you can just cut your right then. So when you're creating new primitives, it wants to know where you want to create the primitive. Now, by default, you can do it on the world grid, or I can do it on top of the existing primitive, which I'll do. I'll pick this. Snapping is snapping has a lot of sources, so I can I can put one right in the middle of this curve right here if I want to, or on this edge, which is what I'm going to do. I'll put it on this edge. I'll say it's that wide. Now, when you're creating new bodies, if you pull them free of other bodies, you're creating new geometry. If I pull it down through that body, we're cutting away that geometry, like a like a chunk of clay or whatever, right? So it's cutting, I say OK, and the Boolean is done. And that works for just, just what every primitive there is. I can go in here and say, well, let's create a box from, let's say, here to here. And we'll drag it through there. And we'll say OK. And you can just, you can build up stuff all day long with this. And in a second, uh, we'll take a look at the history timeline and show you how that uh, can influence things. So what is the history timeline and why does it matter to you? Well, you can see that I got a little bit ahead of myself earlier. You know, I made some cuts, I added some fillets, and then I made some more cuts over on the side. And if I decide that I want to go back and change these, uh, the size of these fillets and things, that would be a huge hassle in any modeling application. But here, uh, you can see on the bottom left corner, or, or sorry, the bottom of the screen, there's this, there's this list of icons that are forming, right? Uh, those icons are your history timeline. So uh, each operation you do appears down there. Sorry, I'm babbling a little bit. But let's say I want to change the width of this outer uh, fillet here. Uh, if you select any segment on it, uh, you know, a little hash mark will appear over top of the icon where that happened. So if I go back to that I, you know, that one and select it and right click it and say I want to edit that feature. Now it opens it back up and snaps the scene back to that point in time. So you can see that it was one millimeter not originally. If I change that to two millimeters right now, eh, let's go with three millimeters just for fun and say OK. Then it snaps forward again to the end and the new size of fillet is in there and all my other operations are added back in on top. That's super powerful when you're just playing around or designing something. You're like, well, I'm not sure how wide I wanted that to be originally, but if I double click this, I'm like, well, let's make that fillet a little fatter like that. This one up here doesn't need to be that big. Let's double click it and we'll take him down, make him a little thinner. Good, perfect. That's what the art director wanted right there, right? Now, truth be told, I typically work with the history timeline off because uh, the program is just faster when you're working uh, in the immediate mode. But you know, the history timeline certainly has its uses and can be used to great effect. Now, all that's great. And if all of our time was spent in a CAD program, we'd be done talking at this point. But you're a game artist, and you need to bake normal maps and that kind of stuff. And that ain't happening in Fusion 360. So what uh, the workflow is at this point is you would take your export, or sorry, you would take your finalized mesh and export it. Now, Fusion exports to a couple of formats. Uh, the most useful one to you is probably uh, STL. Uh, STL is basically just a spew of triangles. But that's enough to get it you know, into your modeling application, which I've done here in Modo. Let me call that up. Okay. So here's that same mesh uh, loaded up into Modo. And you, and you can see that all of the, all the filleting and all the smoothing and all that stuff has come across uh, just fine. And now I can use this high poly mesh 
for a, a baking out normals or use it as the basis for making like a retopo mesh or something or uh, whatever you want it to be used for, right? Now you can see if I turn on the wireframe, this is dense, uh, but it has to be to preserve that kind of smoothing where you get all these curves and bends and that kind of stuff. Um, you can export a lighter weight STL, but it's not generally that useful. Um, you want the heaviest one because you want to get the maximum benefit from all that math I mentioned. <laughs> so yeah, you can use this to bake out your normal maps. And uh, this is super useful for things like, uh, say like an engine housing that has all those weird curves and bends and bumps and that kind of stuff, or a camera casing or engine parts or any of that kind of stuff, right? Uh, once you get comfortable with CAD, um, you can get pretty fast at knocking out clean and accurate meshes. So I hope that got you interested enough to take a look at Fusion 360. Um, I know that was a very brief taste and trust me, you, uh, this video only touches the tip of that iceberg. There's a lot more below the waterline. Uh, it does all kinds of really powerful things, but you kind of have to get your, your hands dirty before you start to appreciate it. So take a look at it. Like I said at the beginning of the video, it's free and it's hard to beat free. And uh, we'll end off the video here with a little bit of a speed session of me just uh, noodling around with it. Uh, so you can see the kind of organic shapes you can pull out of it. It doesn't just have to be your cylinders and spheres and that kind of stuff. So uh, check that out and uh, check out Fusion 360. Thank you.